Hey guys, John here. Today we're in pigments, and as you know, the Acid V is so hot right now, so I have a dial tone, and I try to make that into an acid patch, so this is what happened. Yeah, so that's all from a dial tone and a little bit of subsquare if we want to be completely accurate. But anyway, so this is the sound, and if you don't know how to make the dial tone, it's very simple. It's two sine waves, one at 350 hertz, the second one at 440, both equal amplitude, and then just sample that out and bring that back into the sample engine from pigments or of pigment. So let's go ahead and start recreating this bad boy over here. So let's go to a new preset. And what we need to do is go to our sample engine and select where it says E piano. And let's go down to our SFX. If you don't know how to import stuff, you got to click this little plus here and then add the folder of wherever that sample is in. So we're going to click this dial tone, this guy back right here. <laughs> this is what we're starting with. God, that's ridiculous. Okay. So as with any patch that we want to recreate, whether it's our own patch or whether it's a patch that we like and we want to recreate or learn from it, there's a couple of easy steps to kind of break it down. So first thing, let's turn off our sequencer because that's gonna be annoying. And then also our effects because there's, uh, as you can see here, kind of a lot of stuff going on. So let's turn this off and kind of just focus on the synth side. <laughs> so we have this. Okay, so how do we make this dial tone? into something kind of like that. Well, we have this. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is drop our cutoff to 30.2 hertz, and that's gonna be on the MS-20. So let's go down to the MS-20, drop this down by like 30, something kind of like that, and then really crank our resonance, which, what do we have it up here? All the way to like 0.72, so pretty substantially high, something kind of like that. And we can't really hear anything at the moment because we do need to modulate that. So this is getting modulated by envelope two, which is going to be this shape right here. So attack one millisecond, decay 328. So one and then 328. So something kind of like that. And really the curve is going to be the thing here. So point or 2.96. So let's bring this 2.96, something kind of like that. That should be fine. And then what is our release is going to be 100, which I believe is default here. So let's drag this over on the cutoff and let's see how much depth we actually gave this 0.19. So we kind of drag this down a little bit here. And also our cutoff is modulated by a macro. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's put this on cut and then bring this here. I think we can go pretty much all the way. <laughs> so we have something like that. So our main amplitude envelope is pretty almost like a plug here. So we have one millisecond, 359 for the decay. So we can kind of increase that just a little bit here. Drop the sustain all the way. So we have something kind of like that. Now it sounds a little bit different pitch, right? And this is going to be due to frequency modulation, as we can see here on the left-hand side. So we need to change this from bit crush to modulation. And for the frequency, 0.376. Let's bring this up to 0.376. We're almost there. And that's a fine 0.372. And here we're going to be using the rat, or it's actually called a ratio, but it just says rat, which is kind of funny. And this is going to be on one. So I believe we don't need to change anything. So we're kind of getting that sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep working on this bad boy. So we're pretty much in the ballpark. Okay, so the next thing I kind of did here is because the Acid V also has that sub oscillator, I kind of wanted to simulate that as well. So we're going to be using a sub square here for the utility engine. So turn this on here and go to the square. And here is actually going to the filter. So that's fine. And then the macro three is going to control the volume. And that's going to be 0.72. So macro three is going to the volume of this here. And that's 0 0.72, 73. That's fine here. And so we can call this sub square, something like that. 
I think it's S Q U A. Yeah. Okay. I can spell. That's awesome. Okay. The second one's going to be resonance obviously here. So let's go ahead and do that before we leave to the effects here. Let's drag this down there. And I think it's like 0.7, something like that. And we can crank this up pretty high. And the fourth one's generally going to be effects. And that's where we can actually hop in now. So the whole thought process really of this effects is, <laughs> is quite a lot here. So basically let's turn off the B and let's turn off these here. So the first one is going to be a distortion. So let's go ahead and add that, replace that with a delay. So we have distortion. Now we're going to be using soft clip, but the drive is actually going to be 38.2 deeps. So let's go do that 38.2. And the dry wet's going to be 72. So 72%. I think we have a little bit more resonance added here. Something like that. So let's go ahead and say this is res. Okay, so the next one is also going to be another distortion here. And this one's going to be on germanium. Let's get a little bit more of that grit in there. So let's go ahead and change to germanium. And then we have the drive 24.1, which is a little bit more. So 21.1 or 0.3. And then the drive is actually pretty high up. So 87%. So pretty high up. There's 87. So we're almost exact here so far. And the next up is going to be the tape echo, which is actually kind of nice because it does change the pitch a little bit. Gives a little bit more of an authentic vibe, I find. So this time is going to be 1 over 8. So we're going to do the tape echo at 1 over 8. So go ahead and change that. And then the dry wet's going to be 36%. So it increases here to 36%. And then let's see. I don't think we change too much after that. Yeah, so that should be left alone from there. That's pretty much dialed in. And then FXB, we need to add a little bit of the Chorus Juno 6. And... This one, I don't believe we changed too much for the main stuff because the default actually comes quite nicely, except the dry wet's going to be substantially lower at 21%. So let's bring that down there. And then last but not least is going to be a little bit of reverb. So we have a reverb of 0.15. So that's going to be 15%. So let's go to reverb here and 15 like that. And let's see what we did here. So I don't think we changed a little bit more decay, I think. And he brought down the low pass and the dampening. So something kind of like that. So pretty. So pretty close, actually. And you'll notice in the cutoff macro, there's almost this little sweet spot there. Kind of like right there. And then let's turn this effects on. And let's go ahead and label this and start kind of dragging and dropping and making this macro actually work. Okay, so there's Dorsen 72 and 87. So this is going to be 72. 0.72 right here, and then 87 for the next one here. Drag and drop, 87, which is kind of a lot of distortion, but it's kind of cool. Tape echo, 36%. Drag and drop this here to 36% the other way, something like that. Yeah, 35 is fine. Chorus Juno, 6. Let's drag and drop. That's 21%, so 0.21. And then the reverb is going to be 15%. to Drag and drop, and 0.15 for that bad boy. <laughs> And that subscore just gives it some more nastiness. And keep in mind, too, if you increase the sustains on both of the main envelope, the amp envelope here, the VCA, and also envelope two, you can actually get a pretty cool lead out of this. So for the sequencer, let's go ahead and turn this on, and then let's check out the sequencer, what we did in here. So we're actually on the arpeggiator and let's turn the arpeggiator on. And one of the main differences I did here, I think I dropped down the gate length just by a little bit here, 70. So you can hold down shift to bring this down to 70%, something like that, bring them all down. And what's kind of nice when you hold down a note, it kind of goes through octaves. So basically every other one, I just did one octave above that, something like that. So every other one is going up and down an octave.
And there you have it. That's pretty much the recipe to make a dial tone into somewhat of an acid sounding patch. So if you want to get this patch for free, there is a link in the video description below and it can be yours, but also check out Acid V. It's so good. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.